Hey everyone, it's Michael Harp, and I have a very special guest today. This is Tori Reed is joining us. Tori came to me months ago with wanting to approach a different way of dealing with a cancer diagnosis. And I absolutely love working with these people who are willing to not only take Western medicine, but also to incorporate other ways of dealing with this. Tell about your initial reasoning of approaching me and what you had been diagnosed with. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me. I'm facing what for many people see as a terminal diagnosis for the type of cancer, which was pancreatic cancer, which has not a good survival rate. It's about 20%. Folks. And that actually surprises me that it's that high. I thought it was actually... They say it's 10 to 20 now. And the average lifespan after diagnosis is three months to a year. Wow. Yeah. Initially, I'm sitting with this diagnosis and... To be honest, from the beginning, I never felt like it was going to be a terminal disease for me, but I knew it was a serious disease for me. And so one that, that based on the people around me, my, my wife, and particularly my daughter, who is really big into alternative self-awareness, energy, Light sound, just she is aware of that, that different realm. And for me, it was like, my daughter's kind of out there, I would say, when it comes to medical healing things. And I would just let her be do her thing and never really inquired it. But now I'm sitting in a situation where the Western medicine is telling me your likelihood of surviving this is very small. I was really open to just about any kind of methodology that might be able to help. And so it, that led me to my wife finding you and exploring other alternatives. Working with energy is so interesting because it's something that a lot of people don't truly really understand. And so when I hear you, what I want to point out is when I hear you say something like, I never really believed that it was going to be terminal, it's very powerful energetically. When you have that mindset that, you know what, I just don't feel like this is going to be terminal, even though you hear the doctor telling you that the likelihood of it being terminal is being influenced on you because as soon as they say that most people are going to have a really and i'm sure even you did have an emotional reaction to hearing that right this is the energy at work and when you hear that and most people will go into fear about it and the beauty of so much of what when i worked with you is that you really never went truly into fear of it you probably dipped in and out of it but you never just drowned in the fear. And that was really huge, I think, in your ability to empower yourself and to utilize the energy in a positive way. Then I love that you brought up your wife who found me, but also your daughter, because I remember she gave you an affirmation. Isn't that right? She, do you remember what the affirmation was? Absolutely. So one of the things that from day one, once we said, okay, this is our plight, we want to stay positive. And that was the biggest, one of the biggest things is you just stay positive, you stay positive. My daughter, she gave me the mantra and then my wife wrote it on my mirror in the bathroom. So every day I would see the mantra that says that you have a, a powerful healing body. My body is coming into balance and healing as we speak. I am thankful for this healing and I allow. And when she sent that to me, I said, you didn't finish that, the affirmation. You said, I allow. And I'm like, allow what? She says, allow whatever the universe brings to you. Yeah, see, she said, I didn't not finish it. it. It is finished. It is open to the universe to bring you what you need. And I'm like, oh, wow. 
I love yeah. that part of the story. That isn't something, again, that we not do naturally, which is allow or even surrender. And I've certainly been diving into the concept of surrender and allowing so much recently. And you certainly had to go into that because when we started working together, I think I shocked you a couple of times when I would I'd be like, what's going on? And Tori would come in going, oh, everything is really going positively. Sometimes I felt that I looked at completely different than a traditional approach. And one of them was death. I remember you came in and I was like, how are you doing with death? This is something that you're literally looking at. And are, how are you dealing with the idea? And tell me, do you remember that session? I do. And I remember initially when you asked me that question, I was like, I'm not sure. I feel I'm okay with that, but it's it was just a topic that I just didn't think about, didn't want to think about an actuality. And that's the key right uh, there. And so, didn't want to do it. And that's why I was asking you to invite you into that. That's exactly what you told me. So tell me what that apprehension is there. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> And in my way of it, initially, what I thought helped me was helping me stay positive was I'm not going to think about it. Therefore, I'll be good. If but I ignore I, it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you walk me to say, says that, no, if there's something there. We need to address it. I was like, uh, oh, okay, if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a lot of people realize that we don't need to be in fear of death. Like just because we're talking about it does not invite it in. And in fact, when we talk about it, it's that surrender. It's that allowing of energy. I always give the equation that energy is like water. And when energy is flowing, it's just like water. It can flow over and under rocks. It can just flow to where it needs to go. But when we are in resistance, when we are trying to ignore something, when we are unwilling to look at stuff that makes us feel angsty, it like freezes the water into an ice cube. And now it's not moving. It's frozen. And if you truly want to be in that allowing energy, that allowing space, you have to look at these things that make you feel uncomfortable and try to identify what is it about it that's uncomfortable that I need to look upon and resolve. So that I can look at anything and keep that energy moving. I think that and that was like a big aha for me, where especially when you were saying that when I when you have something that you're apprehensive of, that it freezes that energy and, and you're not you can't move forward. And we discussed some things that I had thought I'd long past that, but I really hadn't. And, but because the situation wasn't confronting me on a daily basis, I thought, oh, I'm past it. But I found out that it, that it was just not true. And even for someone that they're holding some blockage of somebody that's even no longer in my life or even alive either, can still hold, put that block in your life and you're moving forward. And that was, like I said, that aha, wow, I never thought about that, how that could have still be something that is hindering my growth. You are always willing to dive in. Like sometimes I think I took you by surprise, but you always went there. <laughs> the other thing you remember is like when you first talked to me and I think this was at the first session and you said, should I do chemotherapy? This is bringing in a lot of stuff into your body that is poison. It's literally killing. Things. Yeah. And it was, it, and that was an interesting conversation uh, that we went through that you walked me through because I was struggling with understanding that chemo is going to be something that is killing some things in my body as well as healing. I won't say healing. It, uh, it's killing everything that's in the body instead of just targeting what, what we want. But what you told me was that can make a big difference is setting the intention of knowing what that chemo is going to be there for. And that was something that was really completely new to me is set the intention. Of course, I wanted to, to be helpful, but I had some part to play it or to say in that. I never thought about that. And I think 
starting to open myself up to the, that possibility and understanding, hey, I can tell my body what to do and to expect that made a big difference in how I reacted to chemo, which I had very little side effects from my chemo sessions that I had. That mindset to say, my chemo is here to help me. It is, it's going to be something that is beneficial for my well-being. That was something that helped my overall side effects of the chemo, that setting that intention. Is, and it was something I had never thought or experienced before. Yeah. And again, it's about looking at something in a beneficial way instead of trying to fight against it. And this is actually another conversation we had about fighting the cancer. I was like, how are you doing with the cancer? And, I, and you had said something about that, you know, you're you were putting up a good fight or something. And I was like, oh no, we don't want to fight the cancer. And go ahead and share that. Yeah, I think we were, I was doing exactly that. You there. I'm, I'm here fighting and it's, oh, wait a minute. You, you're not fighting. This, this is something, if your body knew that this was coming. I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, just you knew that this was going to happen. Your body, your spirit knew that this is something that you would be facing. And now we have to figure out why. And I'm like, wow, it, it started blowing me away. It's like, how did, did all this come about? And understanding, are there anything good that comes out of this? And then I started thinking, wow, there are a lot of good things that have come out of this situation. And that the diagnosis of this cancer has changed my life. It's changed it in many good and great ways. And you're saying, and this is the reason for this to come into your life. And you should see this as something, not as you're fighting against, but to see what is it that I'm learning from it. And when I've learned of so many things that, and the closest of my family has expanded so much that I was just like, man, during my recovery, right after my surgery, all of my kids came out to Texas where I had my surgery. And I tell you, Michael, it's probably one of the most blessed times I can remember in 30, 40 years where all of my family were together. We had one-on-one -on -one time. We talked about fears. We talked about troubles. I knew I was going to make it through this, but it was more, hey, I want to do more to, with you all the, after all of this. And we want to keep this, I don't know, this time that we, are, we're, we spend more time with each other and talking and, and growing with each other when I started to look back to see that this was not a bad time. This wasn't a time for terror. This was a blessing. And all of that came out just because of changing my perspective of what, why am I going through this? And I remember we did a guided visualization and we had you look at the cancer inside of you, that how it was presenting itself in your attitude of fighting against it. And I had suggested that, okay, now switch it to loving that cancer, to appreciating the cancer, to changing your attitude and approach to the cancer. And you did, and what happened? It got smaller and it bright, but smaller. And I could see how that, that during that process of working on it and with that different perspective, how it affected the tumor in my oh, head my. as I saw it. And another one that when you changed your energy of loving it and appreciating it for being there, you said that it like shrunk and just looked back at you and went, what? <laughs> yes. Yes. I knew it got smaller. Yeah. I was saying that it got smaller as... As I said, thank you to it for being in my life. And that's when it, it was just got smaller, but it was bright. And it was like, it was kind of like you said, thank you. And I, and I was very appreciative of everything of it. And. But it felt like it almost appreciated that you finally appreciated right. why it was there instead of trying to annihilate it when it was really in service to you. Yes. And it really was. It really was. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a really powerful when you realize your body, it's not doing things to you that is against the information that it's trying to share with you. Like it's really trying to help you. It's trying to give you information. 
And cancer is really just trying to tell you something that is out of alignment. And, you know, what that is completely different for everyone. It usually has to do with old traumas or belief systems. And so when you deal with those and when you look at things and appreciate that whatever the information that's coming through your body and your emotional state and you work with it, that body is so quick to adjust and in appreciation because it's finally you're listening. (laughs) Finally, you're paying attention. And it's not even like your fault because we're just not taught this in our society, sadly, that your body is just an informational system that's trying to help you. Instead, we are very much trained and conditioned to fight against the things that we don't like. Yeah, I think, and when you were saying here, the body is trying to tell you something, something, these illnesses and diseases, they're associated with different traumas that happen in your life and things. And my daughter had looked up, he says, yeah, pancreatic cancer is associated with judgment and unforgiveness. And I'm like, that makes no sense for me because there's no one in my life that I have judgment or unforgiveness with. And then we started to explore more and I may not have had anyone in my life right now, but what about the past? What about someone that has come before that you still hold some kind of a judgment against? And I was like, oh, now you're going down a different road there. And I did have that in my life that a big blockage of one I knew of, but because they were no longer in my life, I thought then that's over with and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to clear that out. But I I think that it was a process that I needed to go through. And I could almost feel the relief of relief when I released that person that I had this issues with, I could almost feel the relief of my body when that happened and it was just an amazing time that that you walked me through that's so important to realize that just because we've moved on and maybe the people that played roles in this game are no longer here we still have aspects that can be frozen in that trauma if it wasn't really truly dealt with at the time and that's what you're referring to that there was and i say an aspect there was a part of you the younger self that did have trauma, that had a lot of emotional energy that was stuck. And that had stayed stuck that whole time. Because the thing about Tore, that he's, you were always so great to work with. You were always very positive. And this is actually a lot of metaphysical people try to be positive all the time. But sometimes we do have to look at these older traumas and recognize them. And like you said, to release them. And you can actually feel that release. And when we would, when I usually work with someone, I usually ask about the emotional feelings that come up with that trauma. And I can really feel it in people when it starts to build in them. You can feel the emotion start as they tap into these old aspects, these old situations. And you did that. Now, since you've released it, have you gone back into that same situation and felt how you feel it differently? Can you build, bring in that same level of emotion from that trauma? Or is it just now truly a memory versus a triggered memory where you feel the triggered emotional aspects of it? It's more of a memory now because I think I, I tended to be the type of person that compartmentalized things. And that's why I had thought, oh, it's over with. I'm, it's something I have to deal with. And I didn't deal with, but once I did, I knew I had that release from it. And so I can look back at it. And actually I look back at it and and the person with a whole new light. So that that has changed significantly uh, since the release of that blockage that I had with. And that's the way it should be. Once you really looked at that and released it, like you said, and removed that stuck of that energy how you look back on it you don't feel that trauma you don't feel the angst or the anger hold on everyone we're just taking a small pause for our sponsor in this fast-paced world finding a moment of peace a space to truly connect with your inner self can sometimes seem elusive i've been there too and that's why i created quantum life It was my greatest desire to provide a wide array of products and services designed 
to guide you on your spiritual journey with the purest energy possible. Our beautiful Quantum Life store carries all the tools and inspiration you need for your own spiritual journey. Our crystals come from around the globe, expertly selected for their energy, and all are cleansed before being offered to the public. We also have a full selection of tarot and oracle cards, self-empowering jewelry, books, aromatherapy, candles, home decor, and many one-of-a-kind unique gifts that you'll want to surround yourself with. Our main goal at Quantum Life is that we will assist you through your healing and spiritual awakening. We are here to help you feel at home in this new age. But Quantum Life is more than just a store. It's a community. My mission? To provide you with the tools to elevate your life and explore your potential. Whether you visit us in person or online, I invite you to embark on this journey of self-empowerment to reach the realization of your own true power. Quantum Life is where your journey inward begins. Elevate your life and explore your potential. What I'm going to work on today, and I'm like, oh, I'll find something. <laughs> that, that is true. I was like, so I don't know well, what should we do. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> so that was awesome. That was awesome. Where are you now, Tori? Where are you now in this process of having been diagnosed, gone through chemotherapy? How is it standing for you now? I've gone and had my surgery where they've gone in and Took, took out the tumor and any remnants of it. Something very, very unique happened with my pathology. They took a third of my pancreas and my spleen. When doing it, they do some testing on it to see what treatments have been effective on it, what has not. They check the margins around it, make sure there's no sign of any spread. But uh, so one of the things that the pathology said was that there was no sign of treatment, which said that the chemo that I had gone through was not working on the tumor, but the tumor got smaller. So they're like, we don't understand that. And we have to figure out what is going on and why. And it's just something totally unique they say with that. So I'm sitting in this holding pattern because the standard protocol is to have six months worth of chemo, and I had four months already. They have the surgery, and I was going to go through two more months of chemo, but the pathology says the chemo isn't working. Why take my body through the next two months of chemo? So they're trying to figure out what they should do post-surgery. So you completely confused them because you shrunk this pancreatic cancer tumor. And how Correct. often does that ever happen in their world? Especially with it not being related to anything that you've done in Western medicine, from my understanding. Exactly. And the pathology said exactly that their Western medicine technique that they were using showed no sign of effect on the tumor. So they're like, why did it get smaller? Or how did it get smaller? And, and what do we do now that moving forward? And this is... And MD Anderson is one of the number one cancer, specifically for pancreatic cancer, facilities in the nation. I have them confused on this. The chemo, when they prescribed the chemo for me, what they told me was, we just wanted it not to spread anymore. We never thought it would get smaller. So we would have been very happy just to see it the same size, but just not spread. Uh, that's what the chemo, what we were putting you through the chemo for. With it getting smaller, this has been rather unique. That doesn't happen very often at all. And so the one statement was, we would have been happy if it just hadn't spread. <laughs> but it got, it not only not spread, it got smaller and continually got smaller throughout the entire chemo period. But then it showed that the chemo didn't do any, have any effect on the tumor, which wow. is, have them scratching their head. I bet, like you said, one of the top cancer places in their line. Did they ask you what you've been doing? Were they curious? Very strangely, they did not. They have not asked, are you doing anything else? 
in your journey, what has been the number one thing for you that has empowered you through this journey? I will tell you, Michael, I started this journey with some trepidation. My apprehension has been doing something, and I don't know now, I don't know what, but doing something that would conflict with my faith, that my, the power of God in my life. And what I have learned and explored is that a lot of the things that I have believed in my basic Judeo-Christian upbringing that it, there is really still no conflict with the, the, some of the things that I believe in the power that, you know, that God created this body to, to do the things that, that we can do. So I, I think the big part of this is just to be open and even talking up about some of the things that we talked about, death and life after death and how is that going to be when we were exploring death? What I expected after death or after life, but to be open to understanding that there are many different interpretations of what happens after. And just because I talk about it doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, you're a heathen and you're doing these kind of things. That's being open to understanding the different experiences and what's been found and explored that has allowed me to say, especially in the situation where I might be facing a terminal disease. And why not talk about this? Why not explore these things? And what is the conflict? Is there any conflict? And I found that it's been a path of, of discovery that I have definitely grown through this process. And all, all the areas of growth that I've had since I've journeyed down this path, it's just been so enlightening to me, understanding the different powers and realms and the power of light and energy and sound and this it's just been really eye-opening for me the process of your journey of going through the cancer diagnosis recovering from it and all the things that you've learned throughout this process how is this being applied and how do you see it being part of your life journey and your life purpose I've been in, in a number of life-threatening situations. I was in the military. I've been in a combat environment. I had a, a heart attack in 2019. This time, with all my near-death experiences, this time has been quite different in the process of learning from the experience. Before, I went through it and was basically just shell-shocked that I made it through it. But through this process, it's been a growing opportunity for me that I never went through with the other life-threatening situations. The impact of how I view life, what I'm doing on a daily basis, all has changed because of the growth of my mindfulness and my energy and my thankfulness and how I feel and where I put my thoughts, all of that affects me on a daily basis that even after going through life-threatening situations in other circumstances, I never really learned from those experiences. But this one has brought me into a new understanding where I feel like it's going to, I'm going to be on a journey for the rest of my life. And thinking about uh, setting the intentions of my day, and uh, it's just I view things so much more different than I used to. It seems to really change how you look at life, right? Yeah. <laughs> and how you yeah. approach life. I'm so very pleased and happy that you could share your journey and your story with us because I think it's a very powerful, impactful story that will help others feel a little less alone in their own journey. Any final things that you want to share? I would say, especially if you have had a diagnosis of cancer, one of the first things that everyone will tell you is stay positive. And this is something I can't express enough. And it has to be more than saying something that is positive. You have to believe that it is going to make it through this. I remember when I first started saying my mantra, that last part, 
about I am thankful for the my body coming into balance and healing. My first few times I would just say it, but I, there was a point where I said, I don't feel that thankfulness. And then I started to make myself to remember that feeling of how happy you are when something is joyful with you. And I said, I need to feel that when I say that I'm thankful. And when I felt that kind of come into where that thankfulness feeling inside of me and my mantra seeing it all together, it started to mean something different. I would walk out of that bathroom feeling differently. And that is something that, that you got to believe. Stay positive, but also be open to some of the alternatives. Because I think setting that intention in your mind, your body hears that. You have to get that in your subconscious. And these kind of things, it makes a difference. That Western medicine can't even give you the answer to. So I think that stay open, stay positive, and seek out alternatives. Well, Western medicine doesn't have the answer to everything. <laughs> yeah, no. Western medicine doesn't have the solution. They do not embrace the soul part, the emotional part. It's really critical. You can't just say something. It's your emotional attachment to what you're saying that is the key into manifesting, into changing your reality. And we are creators. Like when you are using that intention and you're utilizing the verbiage and you're feeling and getting that energy to well up in you, you are the creator. You're being very specific on what you're wanting, right? You're like, I am thankful my body is healing. And that is how we create is we are changing the energy. There's always things within us, all trauma responses or aspects that are in fear. And we have to deal with them and resolve them to really be positive. We also have to be aware that if things don't feel positive, we have to look at why we're feeling that, which is when I would always say, all right, we got to look at death because I don't want you to be in fear of death. I want you to be able to think about death. I want you to be able to have a conversation about death without an emotional negative reaction to it. Tori, I'm so proud of you. You are amazing. And keep on that journey of self-discovery and I thank you for being here and sharing your story today. Thank you, Michael, for having me. It's been my pleasure to be able to share and always willing to share with anyone my story or just the possibilities of new alternatives that are out there. Stay positive. You don't know until you go in there and explore it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's not, there's, the big bad wolf isn't there to scare you. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Well, thank you again. And yeah, keep having an amazing life. Ah, thank you, Michael. Thank you for everything you've done for me as well. So holding my hand going down that path. <laughs> <laughs> I am always so happy and pleased to be able to hold anyone's hand who is interested in that recovery and sharing their authentic story. So yeah, beautiful. Namaste. All right. Take care. Are you ready to embrace your journey and dive deeper? There's a ton of great resources available. First, you can visit the Quantum Life website. There you'll find loads of articles, products, and learning resources all to support you. For those of you who are social media savvy, be sure to check out the Quantum Life Facebook and Instagram pages. They're constantly updated with fresh, engaging content that's going to keep you in the loop. If you're more of a visual learner, the Quantum Life YouTube channel is an absolute goldmine. You're going to find a variety of videos that range from interviews, beginner guides, to in-depth explorations all around the topic of self-empowerment and exploration. And of course, we encourage you to subscribe to this podcast for more great stories on how others overcame their challenges, the traumas and blocks in their own life to embrace a quantum life.